Are you looking to bring a new dog into your home? Choosing a pet can be an exciting time, but it's also a big decision that's going to impact you, your family, and your dog for years to come. So to help us make the right decision when choosing a pet is Colleen Pilar, along with her pet, Edzo. Colleen is the co-owner of All About Dogs Training Facility, as well as author of Living with Kids and Dogs. Colleen, thank you for coming today. Thanks for inviting me, Meredith. It's so important to think about uh, the process, everything that you should consider before you finally get a dog. And I think, you know, that a lot of people get a dog for the wrong reasons or without making those considerations right. and then later they're worried and they're wondering and they're saying I don't think I can take care of this animal. So let's go through those types okay. of things. So what should we think about before we even look at dogs? Well first you should decide does everyone in the family want a dog? Many 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 of my clients come in and the mother will say I can't believe we have this enormous dog but my husband and kids wanted a big dog and they really wanted a small dog. And then who shows up at class week after week? Mom. So we want to make sure that everybody has a similar idea in mind of what it is that we're looking for and that everyone's willing to do the work involved in having a dog and that the adults really recognize that it's their dog even though they got it for the kids. That's crucial. <laughs> Let's expand upon that a little bit. So you've got a couple of kids. They really, really want a dog. Mommy, I promise, I promise we're going to take care of it. We're going to walk it every day. We're going to... Parents need to realize that the burden of responsibility is going to fall upon them. Absolutely. They're going to spend every day for the next 10 years saying, did you walk the dog? Did you brush the dog? Did you feed the dog? Did you clean up the yard? And that's okay. The, the benefits of having a dog really outweigh some of the downsides of having to be on top of all that. Sure. If it's the right decision for you and your family. And so my children are great with my dog, but they don't do a good job of, of anticipating the dog's needs or taking care of them, we have to really watch over that, both of us. And you say don't expect to be able to say, if you don't take care of this dog, we're getting rid of him. Well, I think that's, that's setting your children up for adult psychotherapy. Sure. I got rid of my dog. <laughs> um, it's not really that, not but fair. You, it's a big, big taken job. responsibility for the animal yes. as well. So right. It is and, a big and job. Right. And we don't just get rid of family members. Mm -hmm. So there are times that you might have to rehome a dog, but it shouldn't be because your child didn't walk him. Right. You know. So it's something to consider up front. Absolutely. All right. So how old ideally should kids be before they get a dog? Well, if the, if the family doesn't already have a dog, and many people get a dog when they get married, they get married, they get a dog, and then two years later they have a child. So if you don't already have a dog... We got a cat. Did you? <laughs> Good, it's yeah. a real typical, you know, sure. let's get married, have a pet. We did it. And if you don't already have a dog and you can live without one, then it'd be great if you'd wait till your youngest is six. Because before that, they're not really developmentally aware and not all that empathetic. That they understand rules with the animals. With the animals. Mm -hmm. They understand rules, but they're not going to be consistent about you can't pull on an ear, that kind of thing. Okay, so six is the ideal age. Wait until your youngest is six. Yes. That's the ideal age to be able to introduce a dog. That's the ideal age. But if you truly love dogs and want to have a dog, you can make it work with younger kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, people do it all the time. Sure. It's a lot of work. I mean, sure. there were certainly Just days that, that I said, I can't believe I'm, you know, changing diapers with a dog trying to help me. <laughs> but it's, it was something I wanted. That's excellent. Now, when we're looking for a breed, what are some rules of thumb to follow? I wish there was one breed that I could just say, this is a great dog for kids. And there are breeds that have that reputation. But what we have to recognize is that dogs are individuals just as people are. And anyone who has more than one child knows that. That I have three sons. They are no more alike than any other three males in the world. So we can't just say, oh, you know, all golden retrievers are good with kids. Sure. Probably 70% of golden retrievers might be because the breed has that reputation, but that's a good 30% that really aren't. So we're looking at sociability much, much more than breed. That's okay. the biggest thing we want to look at is, is this dog social and does this dog really enjoy people? Excellent. Now, you mentioned the Goldens have a, have a large percentage of yes. being good with kids. Yes. Are there other job, dogs that typically have a large percentage where you might find yourself gravitating towards them to test them out before you might another breed? 
Yes, there are. There are plenty that do. I mean, the Cavalier King Charles is a, is a very social breed. The Bichon, the Boxer, the Labrador, okay. some Beagles. There are there are definitely lots of breeds that are sort of known for enjoying hanging out with but people. But it's really about the individual. It's dog. about the individual. Okay, so talk to me a little bit about the individual dog then, in terms of characteristics that we should look for. Well, the biggest one, of course, is sociability. And it's really easy to mistake excitement for sociability. But what you want is a dog that really comes up to people and sort of nudges them and, hi, do you want to pay attention to me? Kind of like he was doing before we distracted him with the bone. <laughs> um, very interested in people and wanting to be with them. The reason for that is that the more social a dog is, the less likely he is to become aggressive if something goes wrong. So if I were to step, stand up and accidentally step on his tail, he's going to go, oh, sorry, I left my tail in your way. He's not going to bite <laughs> me. And that's the kind of dog that yes. you'd like to have. <laughs> so a less social dog goes, excuse you? What yeah. happened here? You know. And what, what do you think you're going to do about that? Yeah. Um, what else should we look for in terms of, we've got sociability, are there special tests, are there certain places that we should go to be able to find a more social dog, certain questions to ask? Yes, well, that's a huge question. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, first off, there, there are tests that we can do on dogs, and in fact, Edzo, I adopted in the spring, he came in with someone who wanted to have him assessed to find what would be the right home for him. She was with a rescue group, and watching his assessment, I said, oh, I know the right home. I know Yours. this is, was really a very lovely, social, easy dog. He would have been a great dog for a family who'd never had a kid before. Mm. I mean, never had a dog before. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> never had a dog before. So he's a really good starter dog. I feel kind of selfish that I took him. But he's a lovely, lovely dog. Sure. So we want sociability. And, and trainers can assess that, and shelter workers can usually assess that, so too. So is that something that we can be somewhat com comfortable with or confident in a shelter? We can ask them if they've assessed it? I wish. Um, okay. Some shelters, yes. Some shelters, no. And so it's definitely a question that we should ask. Did you assess this dog? Have you checked the dog? And what can you tell me about how the dog scored on this test? And if they have information for you. It should have information about the dog's sociability, about the dog's tolerance for handling, you know, if you are, have a very sensitive body or a little bit skittish or fearful. Sure. And then one other trait that we always worry about is resource guarding, which is the trainer term for it's if, mine, don't take it. Right. With food, <laughs> with toys, with anything else. Right. That's something to keep an eye out. Um, when we go to a breeder, then we know what breed we're getting, right? as opposed to uh, maybe a rescue foundation where we don't. Oh, he lost his bone. But what are some questions that we also need to ask breeders? Well, we would want to ask first, make sure that the puppy stayed with their mother until at least eight weeks. That many dogs will um, start to reject their puppies a little around five weeks. And what okay. the mother is saying is, you okay. need to learn patience and frustration. Okay. She's not saying, I'm sick of you, and I hope they find you a new home. And so sometimes puppies are placed far too young. So okay. At least so eight, eight weeks. eight weeks. Minimum. And then you and also said something about the breed of the dog, finding out how often they're um, bred, correct? Yes. Yes. We would like to have the, the mother have at least fewer than, um, I'm saying that wrong, one litter a year or less. So okay. if she had a litter every two years or whatever, that would be good. I don't want her to be bred every cycle, but that's a little bit too much strain on her no. body, on her health, and on her ability to nurture puppies. Okay. So then with the litter of puppies, what we would want to do is go in and figure out which puppy is ours. Uh-huh. And, and how do so we do fun. that? I know we've uh, only got maybe... It may be a minute left, but how okay. do we do that? Well, if we have kids, okay. then ideally we would want to see which dogs would approach the children quickly. Okay. You know, which ones will come right over and go, oh, hi. And then we want to pick one of the ones that was in the middle range. The first one over might be too confident, and the one that won't come at all might be too fearful. But some of those middle range puppies so are sort of in interested. The might be yeah, your new best might friend. Might be your new best friend. Oh, that's fabulous. Any last things that you want to, that you want to leave us with before we go? Um, I think that having kids and dogs is a lot of work, but the rewards for the children and for the parents are huge. And so I really want to make sure that we can help people do this and really enjoy having And something I know you also wanted to mention is be aware of what kind of uh, expectations each breed has. Right. So, for example, if you've got a condo and you're only going to be able to walk them once a day, don't get a running dog. Right. Or if you're the type that's a couch potato, that's great. Look for somebody who's going to keep you company on the couch. Right? Exactly. You want to ma match to your energy level. Oh, thank you so much, Colleen. I really appreciate it. Thanks for it. having me, Meredith. And thank you, too, Edza.